Hello and welcome to the Audible, the quarterback analysis podcast on Big Italy 42. Here talking about some picks courtesy of our very own at Zach Scott Moxie. He wrote up his top plays and values and we'll go ahead and get into them here. Starting off with the top play, which should be zero surprise to you. Aaron Rodgers up top, 9,200 on FanDuel, 79 on DraftKings. Uh, Vegas team total of close to 30 points here, 28 and a half. And we saw Aaron Rodgers, five touchdown passes on Monday night. He has 10 with zero turnovers here. The guy has been absolutely incredible. And now he gets one of the best matchups of the league uh, in the season. I mean, the 49ers have been abysmal against the pass. And he draws them now. And this is going to be not a pretty situation for the 49ers here. uh, As Zach points out here, 49ers have allowed opposing quarterbacks to score at least 18.7 fantasy points per game. Rodgers in a great spot here. Um, Devontae Adams obviously looks like he's going to miss some time, but James Jones has stepped in admirably already into the offense. Randall Cobb looking like the uh, Randall Cobb of old with his three touchdown grabs on Monday night. So this looks like a, uh, a perfectly fine scenario for Aaron Rodgers to to explode once again. So going to be a very popular play, cash game and, and the like, and rightfully so. Andrew Luck, $9,100 on FanDuel, $78 on DraftKings, just $100 less than Aaron Rodgers on both. Colts have a team total. Close to 30 as well there. And we saw fourth quarter Andrew Luck has been the best Andrew Luck. The guy has been absolutely incredible in the fourth quarter last few games after subpar one, two, and three quarters. So this is a spot for Andrew Luck where he certainly should be um, able to turn things around. Facing off against the Jags. Jags who uh, allowed 51 points to the Patriots. Obviously this Colts offense, not quite the high-octane attack that the Patriots are, but is a great spot for him against a team that's very, very beatable. And as Zach points out here, last year, two games against Jacksonville, 623 yards and and five touchdowns for Andrew Luck. Another game they need to win. Hopefully, Andrew Luck will uh, get his production early and they won't have to come from behind at the end. But all those fantasy points in are kind of exciting if you uh, have Andrew Luck, as long as it's a GVP and not a cash game. Don't like seeing that in your cash games. But Andrew Luck did sit out practice. Looks like it was more, the, more of a uh, veteran day off with some shoulder soreness. It looks like he's going to be fine. They said supremely confident that he's going to play, so I'm not too concerned there. Uh, value cash game play, as Zach points out. This is a guy that I love this week. Derek Carr from the Raiders. Two straight 300-yard games facing off against the Bears this week. Quite possibly the worst all-around defense, offense team in the entire NFL. They are terrible right now. And uh, value price, 7000 FanDuel 53 on DraftKings. Carr, I mean, he he and his rapport already with Amari Cooper who made Joe Hayden look terrible as well. I mean, this is a, it's a potent offensive attack all of a sudden. I mean, they've got Michael Crabtree in there as well. Latavius Murray in the running game has opened up plenty in the passing game. So Derek Carr, one of the best, if not the best value in the week. Gotta love him here. Coming off two straight great performances. Andy Dalton for the Bengals continues to play well. 76 on FanDuel, 59 on DraftKings. As Zach points out here, sixth in the NFL with 866 yards, fourth in touchdown passes with eight. Now facing the Chiefs, Bengals have just under a 24-point team total here, and the Chiefs have allowed the most points to opposing quarterbacks this year. Um, they're also giving up tons of yardage to yardage and touchdowns to wide receivers, which looks great for A.J. Green coming off his monster 200-plus yard performance in Week 3. So Andy Dalton, the guy who's been flying under the radar, don't expect him to fly under the radar much anymore. Um, this guy's been playing very, very well. Elite GPP play he has here as Cam Newton, guy who was on all the millionaire maker winning teams, the million on Sunday million on FanDuel, um, 8,300 on FanDuel, 7,000 on DraftKings. And uh, as Zach points out here, he thinks he has um, one of the highest ceilings of any quarterback lead due to his running ability. He has 31 rushes in three games with two touchdowns, 144 yards, and you know, this is a Tampa Bay team that looked terrible in week one, looked great in week two, and then uh, they did pretty well in week three. So this is a situation where Cam Newton, he you know, he doesn't really have a go-to receiver. He's got a go-to tight end in Greg Olson. Obviously, he puts up plenty of numbers with him. You've got guys like Ted Ginn who have stepped up who aren't reliable volume guys, but deep play threats, which is something this offense ser- seriously needs. And, I mean, he, he's been adequate over the past few weeks. Cam Newton, like we said, a very, very high floor for him. and uh, But due to the fact that this Tampa Bay defense has looked good in two of the last three weeks, that this may isn't an ideal scenario for Cam Newton. So maybe he's more of a uh, more of GVP play, depending on your preference. I think he's a French cash game play as well. But either way, 
definitely a guy that you got to consider this week. Another guy who's been great, another um, ex Bengal here, Carson Palmer for the Arizona Cardinals has been phenomenal. 8,200 on FanDuel, 68 on DraftKings, and he's got nine touchdowns and 803 yards so far this three in three weeks. It's a tough matchup, though, which is why he's a GPP play. The Rams have been really tough. Um, they've allowed over 80% completion, but just seven yards per attempt. Um, only two passing touchdowns on the, the, the season, and they do have 13 sacks. So this is a situation where, you know, you expect the Cardinals defense to step up and put Palmer in good spots like they have all season long. So if you aren't quite expecting the ceiling that we've seen recently, but, I mean, Palmer has looked great. Great rapport with Fitzgerald. John Brown still the deep threat. Um, Andre Ellington came back to practice today, so he might be a good to go this week as well. Um, potent running attack now with uh, with Chris Johnson running well. If you bring Ellington back in there, David Johnson pit playing well as well. So lots of options in this offense. Certainly don't think that the tough matchup is going to take much away from Palmer, but probably move, moves him into more of a GPP play for me as well. Value GPP plays. He has Phillip Rivers here for the Chargers, 7,400 on FanDuel, 61 on DraftKings. Threw over for four, over 400 yards and a couple touchdowns in week one. Since then, hasn't been great. Um, last week, ended up with a uh, a decent line considering the game flow, but um, this is a, a guy who is, has a decent matchup this week, though, against the Browns. Two touchdowns to quarterbacks in each game of the season. They looked terrible last week against the pass. Uh, Lamari Cooper just, and Derek Carr just shredded them. 8.1 yards per attempt and 285.5 yards per game since week one. So Vegas has charged with 26.5 point total. They're favored by eight. That right there all feeds into the game flow of uh, Phil Rivers putting up pretty big numbers here. We know this is certainly a, a pass first attack, but also a really, really bad uh, run defense for the Browns, worst in the league so far. So definitely have a nice balance in this one. Michael Vick, last up here. In case you didn't know, and I'm sure you know by now if you're watching this, Ben Roethlisberger went down. Looked like a much more serious injury. Now we're seeing potentially four to six weeks that he's out, which is great news for Roethlisberger owners in season long and great news for the Steelers and DFS players who like to play in Roethlisberger. Um, was putting up monster numbers. And Michael Vick stepping right in, 67 on Fanduel, 5,000 on DraftKings. He's got some elite weapons. I mean, he has quite possibly the best receiver and quite possibly the best running back Obviously, another one of those, depending on um, your personal opinion. But Antonio Brown, Le'Veon Bell, elite weapons. They can put up tons of points. And obviously, this is a Thursday night game. So if you're playing Thursday through Sunday or Thursday through Monday slates, you can certainly throw Michael Vick into a couple of your GPPs. He's cheap. He certainly has upside. Um, we've seen him be a very good quarterback. We've seen him be a very bad quarterback. So obviously, deep GPP play, only if you're going to be loading up and only if you're playing on Thursday night. But we, he certainly has a ton of upside. And I mean, the guy can scramble as well. This is a. Ravens secondary that has not looked good. So certainly very, very beatable. And that will wrap things up. Find us on Twitter at DF Cafe. Subscribe to this YouTube channel. We have lots of great content. Wrapping up the MLB season and NFL, college football, lots of other great content. Top to bottom at DailyFantasyCafe.com.